ready to give up who you once thought you were. I am. Ready to sacrifice everything you held close. I am. Are you ready to leave your life behind and walk the path of shadows? I am. Oh, oh my, that's, mm, that's, no, think I'm gonna be sick. Oh, this? Huh. I just got some work done so I could have eagle vision like you guys. That is not what that means. Oh God, back into the darkness and get out of here. Oh, where's my bucket? Oh man, I spent so much on this. <gasps> Ooh, rabbit. <laughs> Hello, Internet! Welcome to Game Theory, the show that has an eagle eye for detail. Loyal theorists, after two years, it's finally time to take a leap of faith back into the world of Assassin's Creed, specifically with their newest game and our sponsor for today's episode, Assassin's Creed Mirage, releasing later this year on October 12th. Now, despite Mirage being the newest game in the franchise, it really promises to be a return to the simplicity of the older games and what made the AC franchise so unique. An emphasis on stealth, on hiding in plain sight, on taking out targets and then vanishing before anyone knows that you're there. That's what Assassin's Creed Mirage is offering. It's got a back to basics vibe going on, focusing on the iconic gameplay that defined the franchise for 15 years, shop fingers and all. But while these features may feel old school, the city of Baghdad that you're tasked with navigating in the new game is anything but. It feels alive, smarter, more real, with NPCs reacting to every small thing you do as you navigate through the maze-like structures of the round city. But obviously when you're talking about a bigger, smarter, more reactive city, you're also talking about a need for a smarter, faster, more stealthy class of assassin. In other words, you're gonna have to be relying on your training a lot. Specifically, one of the mainstays of the franchise, Eagle Vision. That's the skill that makes the screen go black and white and then lets you find your target regardless of what's in your way. It also helps with locating hiding spots, key items, even clues to help with investigations. This ability is so iconic that after it was introduced in the original Assassin's Creed, practically every other game franchise decided it needed its own version. And you know that for every every iconic game ability, there's always the same old school game theory question. Is it possible? Is it possible for real life humans to have something remotely close to an assassin's eagle vision? If I'm down at my local Best Buy during a Black Friday sale, could I hone my senses enough to track the single PS5 that got buried in the chaos? Hold on tight, loyal theorists, as we take a leap of faith from the tower of video game logic to land nestled in the haystack of science. Let's just hope my calculations were wrong about that landing. First off, we should probably establish what exactly we're talking about today. Because when you look across the history of the series, Eagle Vision has actually had two separate forms. The first is exactly what it sounds like. Eagle Vision. Literally the eyes of eagles. In games that show the earliest days of the assassins, like Assassin's Creed Origins and Odyssey, we see our main characters using physical eagles in order to scope out their surroundings and find their targets. And this makes a lot of sense because eagles have incredible vision. Their eyes are actually the same size as a human's, despite how small their bodies and brains are relative to us. But the key difference is actually in the back of their eyes. It's not rounded. Instead, it's flat, which gives them incredible resolution and clarity. You've probably heard that humans with good eyesight have 20-20 vision, right? Well, eagles can have up to 24 vision, allowing them to spot prey that's three kilometers or two miles away. Two miles away! Plus, their eye muscles are able to adjust while they're swooping in for an attack, constantly changing the curvature of the eyes in order to keep their focus on the target. It is awesome. And humans have been using this literal bird's eye view to their advantage for millennia. Falconry is the ancient practice of training eagles, falcons, and other birds of prey for hunting purposes. Although the origins of falconry are unclear, it's believed to have started back in ancient Mesopotamia, around 4000 BC. From there, it spread to other parts of the world, including Egypt, Rome, and Greece, exactly where he saw it being used in both Origins and Odyssey. However, I think we can all agree that training an eagle to signal to you and having literal eagle vision in your head as we see it in the games are not quite the same thing. So what is eagle vision? The real eagle vision, the one that helped make this franchise famous in the first place. Well, just like with real life eagles, it allows an assassin to focus on and track their prey. However, rather than blurring the rest of your vision and focusing on one thing, it instead turns the world grayscale and highlights targets with a bright shining gold, enemies in red, allies in blue, and important items like hiding spots in white. In short, eagle vision, when you break it down, isn't really vision at all. It's more of a sensation, a vibe, a feeling. And this is outright confirmed in the audiobook Assassin's Creed Gold, where we hear the story of an assassin that's born blind, but still able to use his eagle vision to see. So really, eagle vision functions less like traditional sight and more like a sixth sense. And this is exactly how it's talked about in the games. In Assassin's Creed Odyssey, Cassandra's eagle vision, her gift, is described by Poseidon like this. Humans have five senses to understand the world around them. 
We have been blessed a sixth. Knowledge. The other interesting thing about Eagle Vision is that even though it's genetic, it can also be taught and honed. In the lore of the games, those like Poseidon who claim to have the true form of this sixth sense aren't supernatural gods. Instead, they're a race known as the Isu. Eventually, the Isu mate with Neanderthals, giving rise to the first humans, Adam and Eve. Thanks to this hybridization, Adam and Eve gained the sixth sense knowledge or Eagle Vision from their Isu genetics. And as such, all humans now have the ability to access it buried deep down within their DNA. It's just that certain people are more attuned to this skill than others due to the higher concentrations of Isu DNA floating around their bodies. In Assassin's Creed Syndicate, for instance, we meet the characters Evie and Jacob, who are latecomers to Eagle Vision, learning how to use it in their 20s. Meanwhile, for characters like Altair, Ezio, and Edward, they're highly sensitive to it. Eagle Vision is their natural gift. In fact, Ezio took it one step further. He honed his skill to the point that it became known as Eagle Sense, allowing him to detect the heartbeat of his target, even predicting a target's path. So knowing all of that, what even is Eagle Vision then? What is the Sixth Sense? Well, if it's not based on sight, maybe it's based on another sense, like hearing. Maybe it's something more akin to echolocation, where you can form a mental picture of your surroundings using sound. Believe it or not, but echolocation actually comes in two different flavors. Active echolocation, which is done by emitting your own sounds, kind of like how bats do it, and passive echolocation, where you passively listen to sounds in the environment around you. In both instances, you're listening for information, like how long it took the sound to echo back to you, and how loud it was when it did get back to you. All of that helps you determine where objects are in the world around you. It's a process is sort of similar to what we see with the superhero Daredevil. But this isn't just a comic book superpower. This is something actual humans can learn to do. Turns out echolocation has nothing to do with having better hearing. The people that have been studied using echolocation may only be figuring out their surroundings through hearing, but brain scans show that they're not using the parts of the brain typically associated with sound. Instead, they're processing the sound with the part of the brain responsible for vision, literally creating visuals for the person to see. And the coolest part, much like Kid talked about, this is a trained skill. An experiment in 20 2021 taught 12 legally blind participants and 14 sighted people to navigate through mazes using echolocation. It took them only 10 weeks. The results showed that even those with 2020 vision were just as proficient with learning to echolocate as those who were legally blind. But for as awesome of a human ability as that is, there's just a few things wrong with it as it applies to Assassin's Creed. First, we never hear the assassins making any sort of noise, humming, clicking, nothing. So that kind of rules out any form of active echolocation. And in order to make passive echolocation possible, an animal animal has to evolve special features, larger ears to capture more sound, specialized hair cells to pick up the sound and convert it to electrical signals to the brain. Since our assassins don't tend to have themselves large, hairy ears, I think we're safe to rule all these options out. But what if Eagle Vision is indeed a special sixth sense, like Poseidon calls out? But believe it or not, but we already have ourselves a sixth sense. Yeah, I know, elementary school lied to you. Humans don't just have five senses. In fact, we're not even limited to just six. In reality, we have a whopping seven senses. And no, none of them are seeing ghosts. Nope, these other two secret senses that no one wants you to know about are called the vestibular sense and proprioception. The vestibular system is the perception of our body in relation to gravity, movement, and balance. It measures things like acceleration, g-force, body movements, and head position. For example, it's thanks to our vestibular sense that you know that you're moving when you're in an elevator, despite the fact that our eyes are seeing ourselves as staying stationary. Your vestibular sense is also what helps you walk across a balance beam. Basically, our assassins are using their vestibular senses all the time as they parkour their way through insert ancient city here. The seven the seventh sense, proprioception, has to do with perceiving the location, movements, and actions of different parts of your body. For an example of this, close your eyes right now. Trust me, I promise, there won't be any jump scares while we do this. Eyes closed? Great. Now, with your eyes closed, clap your hands together. It was easy, right? You knew exactly where your hands were despite your sight being obscured. That right there, that is proprioception. Alright, you can open your eyes now. What? It's been sitting there the whole time. It's not my fault that you jump scared yourself. Proprioception is also what tells your brain and muscles how much strength you need to apply to any given action, like climbing a wall, pushing things out of your way, or cutting through a man's jugular. And the best part is, we all have these senses, and some have them better than others, just like what we saw in the games with regards to eagle vision. Every man and woman on this earth has in them a kind of intuition hidden deep away. Most never find it. Others, it takes years to tease out, but for a rare few it comes as natural as breathing. Except, yet again, there's one piece of the puzzle that doesn't fit. Despite the fact that proprioception and the vestibular system exist and act like six senses, and despite the fact that they're natural but can be enhanced with practice, one thing still doesn't sit right. Proprioception is specifically about how we interpret our body's position within the world around us, not how we're interpreting others in the world around us. Same thing with the vestibular senses. They're more about movement and balance of ourselves, and not so much sensing anything in the 
world around us. In that previous clip I just played, Kid mentions that most people never find their knowledge. They never find their eagle vision. And that, quite frankly, just isn't true for most humans as it relates to these two very basic senses. So what else could it be? It kind of feels like we're running out of options. I mean, how many extra senses do I need to be pulling out of the human anatomy hat in order to explain away this obviously gameplay-centric mechanic? But then, as I was re-watching scenes to see if there was anything I was missing, I noticed this. In Assassin's Creed 4, Edward Kenway describes his eagle vision like this. It's like using every sense at once, isn't it? To see sounds and hear shapes are the combination. And that's when it hit me. I've been looking at this all wrong. The reason they call it a sixth sense isn't because it's literally a sixth sense, but a combination of all the senses, allowing us to see things that we shouldn't be able to see and hear things that we shouldn't be able to hear. And once I realized that, I knew that there was one thing that could truly account for real-life eagle vision, synesthesia. Synesthesia is where the brain mixes up the usual senses that we've talked about and allows people to do exactly what Edward Kenway suggested, hear colors, see sounds. Some can even overlap multiple senses at once. The most common version of this is when a person hears a specific sound but sees a specific color. What's essentially happening here is much like how echolocation was activating the visual centers of the brain, synesthesia is doing the exact same thing but taking it a step further by applying it across all the senses. Like when you smell something, instead of neurons activating in a part of your brain responsible for smell, it's instead activating the part responsible for feeling and touch. You are sensing things that aren't technically there, like what we see with eagle vision. We see different people in different colors. Gold for a target, red for an enemy, white for a safe place, which is one of the many ways that synesthesia works, associating visual things like colors with specific sounds, smells, and textures. You might not see the safe haystack to hide in, but you can smell it in the air, and your brain translates that into a white light in your vision, directing you to it. And while synesthesia hasn't yet been proven to be genetic, studies have shown that it tends to be more prevalent in first-degree relatives, just like what we see in Assassin's Creed Odyssey. We are able to feel certain things happening around us. That is our family's gift. It's also worth noting that synesthesia functions differently in different people, and at varying levels of effect. This is very similar to what we see of eagle vision in the games, with each new character having different levels of use, as well as variations on the specific abilities that eagle vision allows for. Nathan Kenway, for instance, was unable to track his targets using eagle vision, but both his father and his son could. During the French Revolution, there were actually three variations of eagle vision, ranging from a quick burst all the way to being able to see through the eyes of other assassins. Not only that, but just like every human the game has eagle vision DNA inside of them to different levels, the same is starting to be hypothesized for synesthesia in humans. The neonatal synesthesia hypothesis suggests that all humans are born with synesthesia, because our neural pathways and sensory outputs are all interlinked. But by the time we get to eight months old, most people's brains have lost those interconnections, resulting in the seven separate main senses that we have today. If you have synesthesia as an adult, then you never lost those extra neural pathways. However, a handful of small studies have been done to see whether or not humans can rebuild those lost pathways. Pathways, and the results are surprisingly positive. While the training to accomplish this was extremely rigorous, the results did show that people that identified as non-synesthetic at the beginning of the testing did show brain activity similar to those that do identify as synesthetic after the test was complete. Now, these are very small studies right now, but if science carries on this line of thinking, there's a chance that everyone will be able to use synesthesia in their adult lives, and the benefits of that could actually be huge. Synesthesia has been shown to greatly improve memory, especially when it comes to musical, literary, or colorful stimuli. And we all know how important memory is for Assassin's Creed games. You ain't gonna be able to search through your ancestors' memory if they can't remember what they had for breakfast. So there you have it, my eagle-eyed theorists, the truth behind our sixth and seventh senses, and how they can all combine and remix together to form what Poseidon calls knowledge. A way to taste color, see a sound, listen to a smell. But hey, one final thank you to Ubisoft for sponsoring today's episode. I gotta say, it was really fun getting to go back to the franchise's roots. The newest game, Mirage, is promising to fill you up on all that nostalgia by taking us back to basics as we play as newcomer Basin, who is honing his unique abilities. Some tells me that we're going to be getting some more classic eagle vision. And now, armed with the knowledge of today's episode, maybe you'll look at the game and the world a little bit differently. So head on down to the description and click the link to pre-order the game for yourself. And as always, remember, it's all just a theory. A GAME THEORY! Thanks for watching.